Let's go. And that is actually a perfect transition to what I was going to bring up is the fact that I think we might have misjudged him and it could be yeah. our little finger character being Larry strong, strong baby. Larry yeah, strong, the, the club fuck, foot, man. amazing, <laughs> amazing scene. So just, I guess, to paint it very quickly, Larry strong is in the God's wood runs into Allison and he just starts dropping some comments and some fucking crazy like Shakespearean sentences yes. like this fucking tricky little guy hanging out in the garden <laughs> just giving out side quests so he basically just rats right near out indirectly but so directly to Allison so this is one of the lines I wrote down which was when one is never invited to speak one learns instead to observe and I was like sexy mm -hmm. shakespeare yeah and that's also <laughs> that feels like such a varus line i tried to even look up like his lines from the books and the show because i was felt in my bones that he had said something like that before but i couldn't find anything it's one of my favorite things that happens in like epic fantasies and so just like tv shows in general is when a character uses their obvious weakness or you know whatever's holding them back as as a way to strengthen other parts of them very similar to Tyrion, right like Tyrion was always you know like who he was like he was kind of always pushed to the side and he used that opportunity to really kind of do the same thing that Lyra strong does by listening and actually being rational so i i do like when the when characters do that but i think larry strong seems like cartoonishly evil already like it's kind of obvious <laughs> yeah he's not good yeah, I feel like there's there's almost the only thing that was missing was him like kind of like chuckling to himself after he said the little twirl. <laughs> yeah, or like yeah. twirling a mustache or having a monocle yeah. or something. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Mike, one question of the scene was um, obviously Allison knew that this tea, what the tea was for, because she knows the drama. Is there other teas? Like he keeps saying unwell, unwell, unwell. Is is it possible that he thinks it's something other no. than this, or no? It's definitely. No. Okay. No, it's all very calculated. It's yeah. he is mm -hmm. he is getting to the point without getting to the point. Sure. Essentially. And, and it, I think the question plainly. <laughs> yeah, that's the question I want to route. I'm just curious of what you guys think of what is the motivation behind this? Because we've seen his dad seems like a very rational, nice man. He doesn't really move for advantage. He just tells it how it is to Viserys. But now we have to his what end? Is what yeah, I'm just asking. curious. And now we have his son who now seems to be this like complete opposite of him, crazy schemer. And like what kind of I feel like is the motivation here? It's a good question. Go ahead, Kathleen. I, I I think that I think he's positioning himself with Allison to become an ally. I don't really know specifically why. I think that he, she's the queen and, and that's a good ally to have. And he's telling her this secret. He's he's giving her intel that obviously matters to her but he obviously respected Otto I don't know if that was another again like a little cheeky line to like get to her to be like your dad man what a, what a guy mm -hmm. I love that fucking guy I don't know I I I think it really is to get in as like a little finger position with Allison right like I I have knowledge like I'm giving this to you for like I don't know good faith I I'm not sure no, no I mean, way. you. that's exactly the, the line of thought I was I was going with, too. It's weird because his dad is now the hand of the king. Like, he's already positioned well enough as a family. Like, he has power. His family has power. I know he wants to probably make a name for himself or whatever, like everybody does. But, like, he doesn't want to shake things up politically because that would only be bad for him. Right now, he's sitting pretty. I was thinking maybe he is... I don't... Did we... When we were seeing the small council... um scenes i guess in the early episodes was there a master of whispers is that what varus was that's what varus was yes there was not not that we saw so we saw hand of the king uh lord of the tides or master of ships rather uh master of laws oh, yep uh so the grand that... and then the master of coin okay yeah so i'm thinking that there's a chance maybe he is paving the way for that to be the first position on the council for like that's the first time the master the OG. is on the council yeah and then that could evolve into eventually what varus takes over in 170 years whatever it is I like but it. i i really don't see why he would want to sow any chaos into this situation because like you're chilling you're at the capital of the modern world you're you're good with the king like why would you be doing this unless you're what kathleen said trying to make an ally with the queen yeah i, I think that I don't know the exact answer. I'm not sure exactly what they're going for here, but I just think that, I mean, he also mentions like he, maybe he says like, you, 
you might need allies or whatever. And she's like, I have allies. Like, I'm the queen. And he goes, oh, yeah, like, Rhaenyra. <laughs> and she's like, fuck you. Like, what are you talking about? Just say what you mean, you dick. <laughs> so, I mean, clearly he's thinking of that mind. And um, one, go ahead. I was just going to say maybe maybe he was working with Otto, too. We know Missaria was working with Otto as one of his little birds and stuff. So maybe he was already aligned with Otto. Okay. Could so, be yeah, a power sure. vacuum, too, because, like you're saying, Otto's gone. So he could fit right in there, make the little birds sing again. Yeah, yeah. That spy network is just dead or is someone else is there to, yeah, to fill that vacuum. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Um, one last little thing I will say here is that... So Ryan Condal, the guy who writes this, is a huge Game of Thrones nerd. So he's like way bigger of a Game of Thrones fan than D&D &D ever were, which feels, I guess, a little bit obvious. But just the 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 beginning of the scene when he's touching the flower, he makes a comment that it's from Bravos and it couldn't possibly grow in King's Landing. And there behind him is like a, a scene, like a painting of like a lemon grove. And I to me and to the people that I've read online, that is a nod. There, there's a huge theory on the Game of Thrones normal universe where Danny always has these memories of being in Bravos and seeing a lemon tree in Bravos, but the thing is that the books also tell you that there's no way a lemon tree could ever grow in Bravos because it's not it's not the right environment for it. So people think that she actually was sheltered in Dorne, and then there's like a whole connection between the Targaryens and the Dorne and the Dornish in the books. So that just felt like him being like, "Hey, everyone else that reads and stalks the internet for theories, like here's a little here's a little Easter egg bone for you." Oh, cute. Hmm. Yeah, that. so that's awesome. I hope it's right. So shout out to Ryan for that.